Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Here is the weekly tarot reading. I pulled the cards with the intention of what is in our collective highest good that we need to know for this coming week. And <clears throat> I pulled from Alana Fairchild's White Light Oracle, Alana Fairchild's Kali Oracle, and Sahara Rose's A Yogic Path. And these are the cards. From White Light, we got the Ivory Wish Fulfilling Crow. I've never pulled this card before. This is cool. I'm excited. And from Kali Oracle, we got Mantra Shakti. And then when I was shuffling a yogic path, uh, three cards just like flew out. And we have Upright Hanuman. And in reverse, we have Niyamas and Prana. So let's check them out. I'm gonna go in order which I pulled them. Mantra Shakti first. I have pulled that card before. It's kind of funny when you pull like the same card multiple times and it's like, I get it. Like this is, it must be relevant. Okay. Turn the music down a little bit. Okay. Mantra Shakti. Her voice creates and dissolves universes. Her vibration within our souls creates our life path. You have the sacred power of voice. How shall you express it? To call for effective divine assistance in all ways? Do not allow negative thought or speech to undermine your inner spiritual connection. Claim your voice and your power to create. Listen for inner guidance and then set your course in motion. Though it may not yet be visible in your physical world, a new order is generating within the soul. In time, it shall manifest in transformed physical circumstances. The power of the word as a creative force has been acknowledged through the scriptures of multiple spiritual traditions, from Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam to the New Age and more. Word is vibration. It is resonance. It is the sound... Mm, it is sound directed into intentional form. Mantra is sacred word, a sound that holds not only the power to create form, but has medicinal qualities for healing mind, body, and soul. In taking form, it creates new and vastly improved circumstances on all levels of our being. The sound of a beautiful voice can draw us closer and the shrill sound of something harsh repels. Sound can bring harmony from chaos and create beautiful patterns for manifestations that are healing and enhancing of life. It can disrupt and break apart that which has been built. Sound is powerful. The oracle indicates that you have the power of voice at your disposal. You have the power to speak your truth, to set yourself free, to choose what you say and how you say it. Your voice has the potential to profoundly affect your reality. This is not about controlling others. It is about claiming your power of choice and voice. It feels empowering and profoundly healing to work with mantra. The very act of using the voice with intention brings about change. It reconnects us to our divine empowerment, the innate creative ability we were granted along with our voice. It is the opposite of victimization, despair, and doubt. It is a connection with sacred power and higher consciousness directed with willpower. It is refusal to be silenced or subjected to an unconscious fate. It is the claiming of voice to co-create an inspired, deeply guided and fulfilling divine destiny. I'm getting a phone call, one second. <laughs> it is taking the reins and sacred surrender into greater divine wisdom. Mantra is a pathway of connection to the higher self and the ancient ones of divine wisdom that continually watch over and guide humanity's spiritual evolution. The sounds of Sanskrit mantra are said to have been shared by ancient rishis or sages who handed teachings from the higher spiritual planes down to humanity. 
They did so to help humans deal with the challenges they foresaw and are still as relevant today as they must have been thousands of years ago. There are mantras for different purposes and the simplest mantras can be very powerful. There are seed sounds or bijas, which are single syllable mantras that evoke certain realities, including the realities or realms of various deities. The Kali bija is krim, spelled K-R-I-M, but it sounds like cream, krim. Krim is a sound for invoking the shakti, the power and activity of Kalima in our lives and the world. It generates a powerful inner spiritual current propelling the soul toward awakening. It breaks cycles of bondage. It aligns our will with hers, allowing the Divine Mother to direct us from within. Like Kalima, this mantra is fierce and powerful yet protective and bestowing of blessing. If you are facing negativity, challenge, or feel deeply guided to connect with the loving presence of Kalima, then this mantra is a powerful shield of protection. However, just like working with Kali, working with her mantra is not for the faint-hearted. When we set a boundary, it is natural that there will be a time when others attempt to cross it. We do not need to feel fearful of this, but rather be wise to it. The spiritual path is not something we walk occasionally. It is a way of being that is a relationship to the divine. We understand there will be times when we need to call on the protection of that relationship more so than others. This is not a burden to the divine, but a beautiful opportunity for us to realize just how loved we are. When we call upon the divine, we are always answered. The message of the oracle is that you have the divine birthright to choose how to deal with negativity. You do not need to allow it to gain influence in your being. Allow others the choice to behave as they wish. With the respect that each path is unique, that we cannot know how another needs to learn and grow through their life journey. However, that is not an excuse to allow for negativity to infiltrate your being and undermine your spiritual relationship with yourself, the divine, and your spiritual path that can bring benefit to the world. The oracle brings a message from the divine mother. If you have need of something, ask for it. Use your voice in a way that helps you and empowers the... the blah, 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 blah and empowers the divine to help you too. <laughs> Cream. Thank you. And now, the ivory wish fulfilling crow. Cool. You can have what you truly want. Such knowledge helps soften and release fear, grasping, control, and doubt. Have confidence that the universe hears your prayers and is even now leading you into that which you seek. You can take sanctuary within your spiritual connection whenever you need stabilization and protection against the fluctuations of the external world. No matter what is happening around you, there is a way through to the fulfillment of your potential. Busunda is the mysterious Hindu sage who assumes the form of a crow and lives atop the magical wish-fulfilling tree, thriving whether there be feast or famine in the world. As a highly evolved supernatural being, he has outlived the ending of numerous world ages. No calamity or cataclysm can shake the powerful divine tree of the creatures who live within its shelter. The sacred tree is a place of sanctuary and protection where no harm can befall any of its inhabitants. The wish-fulfilling tree is a spiritual symbol for the soul, the heart, and the divine bodhisattvas, or enlightened sages, who guide and protect humanity. It represents a high level of consciousness, which is abundant and in harmony with the universe, and therefore blissful, free, and generous. Ah, that's nice. This oracle reminds you that as you align with spirit, you are aligning with a powerful field of grace, which has protective and strengthening qualities. It is a spiritual tonic with effect in all dimensions and all realms of existence. The price for such sacred empowerment is the surrender of one's ego. This is a lifelong journey for most of us, 
rather than a one-time event. We recondition our mind in the ways of spirit again and again. We disentangle our hearts from societal conditioning based in fear, dominance, greed, victimization, of getting one's personal desires met at any cost. We recognize there is a profound difference between taking and receiving. We trust in what is destined for us. Stories abound in the Hindu tradition of various wish-fulfilling manifestations from goddesses to trees to cows and gems. When someone sought to possess the wish-fulfilling treasure for their own personal use, they would always be thwarted by the higher spiritual intelligence of love, which cannot be controlled or manipulated, but remains as it is, pure and generously giving all that is needed to the receptive heart. Ivory is an organic material like bone, which makes up the tusks and teeth of numerous animals of land and sea. Tusks are used to brush away vegetation and obstacles to help an animal move through its environment. Therefore, one metaphysical correspondence of ivory is the ability to move through even inhospitable environments successfully. The message of the ivory wish-fulfilling crow is that one does not have to dominate or manipulate others to attain success. It is enough to align with spirit and trust that your sacred inner work is sufficient to attract whatever is needed to manifest your higher purpose. You can attain what you seek by becoming and radiating rather than through contriving or manipulating. Becoming and radiating. Busunda teaches that when the cosmic fire of transformation becomes too intense, we can focus upon the sacred waters. When the winds of change blow ferociously, we focus upon the mountain. When the waters become such that we fear becoming submerged, it is best to focus upon the movement of the air. He is describing the way of responsiveness and balance. You can recognize what is happening and adjust your sails to suit the winds rather than trying to change the ways of nature. This oracle guides you to trust that you will reach your destination even when there are forces beyond your control. You don't need to be more powerful than oppressive forces to overcome them. In connection, with your heart, in connection with your heart temple of spirit, you will be empowered to proceed on your path with abundance, wisdom, and joy. Noise. Hmm. I like that. Seeing the seasons of life and the elements. Sometimes we're in this fire energy where it's go, 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 do, 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 type A, very Western civilization mentality, you know, got to work, put food on the table. And we're in like sympathetic nervous response where we're just fight or flight all the time, go, 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 adrenals pumping, burning ourselves out, go to the ice, take a cold plunge, ground yourself in the earth, jump in the, jump in the water go swimming, drink a lot of water, you know, just flow with life, whatever, whatever the energy is that's there. Notice when it's, when it starts to become overwhelming and know that it's not the outside world you need to change, but just adapt. Like, hmm, what can I do right now? You, your intuition knows, your intuition always knows, just tap into it. Okay, let's check these homies out. I'm going to start with Upright Hanuman. I love Hanuman. I love his depictions. If you've ever read the Ramayana, um, here's another another depiction of him that I love that I got on Etsy. And I have like another tiny little murti, a little idol, little uh, not idol. That's that's the wrong word. Um, a little tiny little statue, with copper or bronze or something that I got on Ram Das's website on the Love Serve remember foundation and um yeah learned a lot about hanuman from from ram das when i think of hanuman i think of service service to others and courage and power this this monkey jumped like across an entire ocean with a mountain in his hand and <laughs> it's awesome it's a really dope story where are you at 125 Ah, yeah, Hanuman, God of Courage. 
Hanuman represents the evolved mind and the potential we all have to no longer be enslaved to our thoughts, but rather surpass them. When Lord Rama asks Hanuman, how do you look upon me? Hanuman answered, when I believe I am the body, then I am your faithful servant. When I know I am the soul, I know myself to be a spark of your eternal light. And when I have the vision of truth, you and I, my Lord, are one and the same. Chills. To draw upon Hanuman symbolizes you are aware of this truth. You are more than your physical body, your ego self, your personality, your soul. The truth is that you are the divine, as we all are, split from the same source. Continue to practice meditative states where you are reminded of this universal truth to aid in your evolvement. Damn, that's a good one. That's a powerful one. Niyamas in reverse. Niyamas, eight stages of yoga, laws of personal observance in reverse. This is the time to go within. The answer to your question lies inside of yourself. By turning inward and doing the internal work, everything around you will shift. Are you practicing sauka, purity, in your body and mind through asana, yogic postures, and pranayama, controlled breath or breath work? Are you holding on to toxic thoughts in your mind? It's time to move towards santosha, contentment, and realize that there is a purpose to every struggle that you've gone through. Use your tapas, disciplined energy, to move past your limiting beliefs and procrastination to begin your true svadhyaya, study of yourself. When you make yourself your project, you'll experience Ishvara Pranidhana, celebration of the spiritual. And now we have prana in reverse. But I do like this. Subtle essence of vital life force and breath, flexible and creative. Look at your breath and you are looking into your life. Is your breathing shallow, quick and contained rather than deep, slow and expansive? This is what is blocking prana from moving throughout your body body. Your breath is a signal of how you are feeling and when you breathe quick and shallow breaths, you are signaling to your body that you are in danger. Simply by breathing more deeply into the belly, you are calming down your nervous system and allowing more positive thoughts to come through. Transform your breath and you will transform your life. Yeah, these are your homies for the week, sending you so much, so much love, so many blessings. And remember, when people are sending you love and light, remember that love doesn't always only mean good feelings, because sometimes love means, hey, you got to look at this, because the highest expression of love wants you to be free of suffering. And sometimes you got to go through it and fully feel it. So just remember, love and light, it ain't bypassing. We're feeling it. But no one's alone. Have a blessed week. Love you.